This is a presentation on the new features within AlphaCam 2016 R1. This presentation will show the additions and the changes that we have made to the graphical user interface. The first thing that we have changed for 2016 R1 is that we have refreshed the machining dialogues. Now, those of you that have been using AlphaCam for a long time are probably quite familiar with this type of dialog box that we've been seeing that has changed slightly but has always had the same look for, for many years now. Well, what we've done for 2016 R1 is freshen this up and we've introduced a different style. We've now introduced a tabbed style dialog. As you can see we have the tabs along the top where you basically you click into each tab and set all the values and then when you're happy with all of the values in every single tab you then click OK to go and select your geometries to create the operation. As a slight alternative to the tab style we also have the wizard style. Now this works in a similar way to the way the OK and cancel buttons worked in the previous versions of AlphaCam but it now is a true wizard style where we actually have a back and a next button and when you click cancel doesn't matter how far through the dialogues you've got cancel will actually close the whole dialogue box rather than going back how cancel used to do in the previous versions just to make things a little bit easier for the user about the information we're after we've added tool tips and as you can also see we've added images to the dialogues just to hopefully make sure the information that is required is quite obvious to the user We've also added a help button onto the dialogues where when selected will take you to the relevant page within the help file. What we've also done is when you open 2016 for the first time you'll be presented with this dialog that will basically allow you to go and add any new commands that have been created for 2016 R1 into the ribbon bar interface. Obviously you can tick this do not show this message again and then just do it the once and then that will be the only time you'll have to do it. We've also continued to add some new icons now uh, throughout the interface you'll see a few new ones as indicated in the image there we've added some icons for the new window functions. And in the previous version we introduced uh, rendered Z levels and we obviously appreciate that sometimes it's a bit difficult to see some features through others so we've now added the option to basically make those rendered Z levels transparent so you can see through them where required with a user definable level of transparency. So let's go and look at these features within 2016 R1. Let's start by opening AlphaCam so we can obviously see the functions that come up when we do actually open the product. So we start with obviously the welcome screen that is going to tell us about the new features that are obviously come into the latest version. We have a list of them here and as we click through we're obviously presented with all of the new features that we'll be going through in different presentations. Obviously when we're finished with this we can then click finish. If we don't want to see this each time we start up then once again we just untick this, click finish and we're now see now presented with the migration options. So I'm not going to be interested in seeing this again but I do want to go and add the new commands to my ribbon bar configuration so I'll say yes. So this will bring us now to a new option that says new commands not in ribbon so we can obviously see some of the new commands that we've added in so let's go and add these to our ribbon bar now so under geometry I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to rename this and call it the parametric sketcher and I can move my group around so I'm going to put it up near my 2D this is where I'd like to have it on the screen and then I'm going to add the parametric sketcher creation and then the option to run the parametric sketcher so that's added those into my ribbon bar configuration now let's go and add the new 2D transform command 
and we'll put that in edit and it kind of makes sense to me to add it into the move copy etc section so let's add that and then move it up to the start of the button so when we're happy with all this we can then say close and we can obviously now see we have our 2D transform command along with our parametric sketch command okay so I'm gonna now open a job and what we're gonna now do is look at some of the machining dialogues that are now new within AlphaCam. I'm not going to go through every single one because there's quite a few so we'll just give an overview. So if I just go to the machine menu and select a tool and let's go to the rough or finish dialog. So can we see as we come into it we're now obviously presented with our series of tabs. The types tab we will see when we first create the operation. When you actually edit an operation this tab won't be visible because you cannot change the actual type. This is the way that AlphaCam has always been so there's no difference there. So I'm going to go for simple vertical sides and I'm going to select the geometries that I require. As we can see as we change our options we can see how the images change and also information within the subsequent tabs would also be changing and as you can also see as I hover over an icon we get a tooltip come up that just helps us select which operation is the best for us. So let's look at the general tab. Obviously we have some information pertaining to the tool whether we want to cut with compensation or not so I'm going to select machine comp. The type of corners that we require whether they're roll round or straight or we can do loops as well and those for knife cutting machines can select knife loops so I'm just going to select straight and I don't want any of the other options so I'm happy with that let's move on to the next tab so we can obviously type in the levels that we require obviously with Auto Z machining you'll get slightly different options here but you can also see we now have a browse button so if I'm not sure of the actual value of a geometry or a feature within the drawing I can actually now click this option and go and select a point and it will populate the Z level in for me. Okay I can select my other options as I've normally had machining data obviously any stock number of cuts etc here I can apply a lead in lead out so set in exactly the same way as it was before I'm happy with that so tool data obviously speeds and feeds coming off the tool an image of the tool now just to make sure we have got the correct one and we can say OK to this select my geometry click finish and my operation has been created OK so let's now look at one of the pocketing dialogues so we'll go into pocketing now let's look at an auto Z one and once again select the geometries we can go to general now the information in here is obviously still relating to the same sort of thing levels and cuts you now see I have a browse button for the safe rapid level but obviously nothing regarding the geometries because now it is actually going to come from the Z levels of the geometries so let's put in a maximum depth per cut machining data tool data once again pertaining to the operation we say OK to this select our feature finish and we have our tool paths applied I'm now going to go and select a drill and let's look at our drill machine holes options okay so once again some sort of thing we have all of the settings as we did do before so I'm just going to do some simple drilling levels and the bottom of hole so we can obviously once again go for the bottom of these features here populates this for me tool data again representation of the tool let's say OK to that pick our holes and finish okay so that's what we see when we use the tab style dialogues so what do we now see then when we go to our wizard style so if I come to the home tab and go to configure general and we're looking at machining now we have the 
use wizard style when creating new operations. So let's go to that and we can also see here we get the option if we don't want to see the tooltips we can turn these off as well. So let's say OK to that and now let's go and create an operation again. So if I do a rough finish operation again and we obviously see now the tabs have gone and we've presented with our type so let's go for Auto Z again and then we'll click next so we can see I forgot to change my tool so I can click on here and go change tool and go back to my required tool I'm happy with the values here so with this you obviously need to set the dialogues etc as you go along and set the correct values so here depth of cut this time I want to do it full but maybe I might want to push through a little bit further than the Z level so I could say minus 0.5 I could say next to this happy with the values I'm happy with my lead in lead out again next happy with the tool data now we click finish we now click our geometry finish and our tool path is applied now the one main difference that we do see with that is we can obviously see here here's our new operation let's move it down because I want a different operation number we created these first operations as the tab style and if we edit this we can obviously see that it is maintained as the tab style if we edit the one that we created with the wizard we obviously get to see that it is back into now a tab style so you will only see the wizard style for the first time you create an operation if you edit it it will be back to the tab style dialog okay so we've also made a change to the tra Z level transparency so if I go to the home configure general and we look at geometry we have this option here for transparency so if I turn this off and say OK let's just turn the solid off for the moment we obviously get to see we have the Z levels rendered as they previously were but as I mentioned it's a little bit difficult to see some of the features through features when they're overlapping so once again let's go back in and turn on the transparency and obviously we still have the separate options for feature extracted and manually set Z levels and we say OK to that we can obviously now see that we have the features transparent let's just go in and make an adjustment so if we change the transparency level to a little bit higher obviously makes it a little bit more opaque and then we can obviously change that all the way down to the minimum value which is obviously 10% and just makes that a little bit more obviously visible through there so these are the some of the new features that we have obviously presented to us within 2016 R1